This is episode 0010 of Gary's Glorious Golden Nuggets. Today we have the author, poet, and self-described conservative hippie, Mark Jeremy Clifton. He left home at age 17. He's worked jobs in media, publishing, and education. He's a mature student who's earned three degrees. He's lived and worked overseas for over 25 years. He's visited 40 countries. He has two books of poetry, five books in a series about the adventures of Gooey the Slime, which is a children's book series, has three novels and two short stories. With that, I wish to welcome you to the podcast today, Mark Jeremy Clifton. Hi there, Gary. I'm really well, and I hope you're ready to rock and roll. We're going to have some fun. Okay. What is the one thing you wish you had known when you began your online digital career? Yeah, this is a completely different form. I think we all agree on that as it's not really linear and it sort of happens as it happens. So I would say in response, you have to really learn the truth, the true meaning of focus and have your focus really clear and then be able to duck and dive and swim and jump with it. And that has been, that has been definitely a challenge as they would say on this program. It, it is a big learning curve. Nobody will ever doubt that. And I don't think anybody be totally prepared by any former study unless they've actually been in the entrepreneurial digital world. You're right. It's a huge, huge learning curve. So let me get to the next point, which is really interesting. If you looked at where you've been and what you've been doing, if you said, oh, that's a failure, what was it? What was the biggest failure and what did you learn from it? Well, actually, we were talking about this a bit earlier. I think the, the, the key thing for this is the consistency. For me, I've done lots and lots of things. I've tried businesses, ventures, all kinds of different things. And they're all fundamentally been great ideas, even when I look back on them. I think the issue has always been for me is the ability to, you know, to maintain the, the course, to stay with it. My mind does fluctuate. I think we all, certainly right now, I think that's true for everyone. I think that when I look back on it, whenever, whenever there's been some kind of hurdle or something that just appears to be unmanageable at the time, I've looked for an exit, exit strategy. And that has been my, my downfall, you know, not sticking with it, I think is the, is the key learning from all of that. They say in the digital world that the only way that you can truly fail is if you quit. It's just a progressive learning process. And the more you fail rapidly and get up, the faster you get to success. I'd agree with that. I definitely agree with that. I think, as I said, we talked about it before, just by pushing yourself on doing what you're doing, it sort of drives, it gives you the energy and the belief, and the confidence to push it on. The more you, you know, the more it's sort of sitting there hovering in no man's land, you know, this is when it starts to become an issue. So that's I, the I, learning curve. I absolutely agree with you. And I think part of the learning curve is just learning to understand what it is you want and have a huge why. And don't worry about the how, because that will present itself as you go on your journey. For sure. For sure. So the law of attraction works here. That's just all there really is to it. <laughs> so what advice would you give somebody who's sitting back right now saying, I'm thinking about being a digital entrepreneur. Maybe I'll do that. What advice would you give them? Well, as we said before, I think really it's being clear on your, your reasoning and understanding what it is that lights your fire. And for me, lots of things like my fire, <laughs> that's for sure. But I would say once you get it, that thing, you know, that's, that is your driver. And then you've got to, you've got to hold on tight you know, for this kind of helter skelter ride, that's your thing. And uh, it's yours, no one else's, but you can't be, or I think the thing we all learned at the beginning of this kind of program was that you can't really be somebody you're not, and you can't really copy somebody else's thing. You have to find your thing. And once you found your thing, that is it. So that would be my advice just to hold on to it and, you know, nurture it. Don't let anybody steal your dream. And absolutely be congruent. I mean, absolutely authentic, congruent, work from a core of integrity, because frankly, 
you can't do this for someone else. No. You have to do it for yourself. Yeah. As an accomplished author, somebody who is writing, one of the things that people say in the world is, oh, you can never make money writing. What would you say to somebody who says, look, I want to be an entrepreneur and I want to write. What's available to me as a writer in the online world? Oh, lots of things. I mean, it doesn't mean you have to be a book writer. I mean, you can write articles, you can write blogs, all kinds of things. Writing is, is writing. Again, you've got to have your own voice and your own style. I would say that the thing for me, I mean, I can only talk from my own experiences, but as I may have mentioned before, I didn't know about writing, but it was always in me that I knew from a very, very early age that I had a very strong creative leaning and it never really was given the opportunity to shine. And so I went down a right. traditional route. As I say, kind of ironically, here I am back at my parents' house after being away for like 40 odd years, stuck here for a year in the very zone that sort of cut off my creative juices. It's all very weird. There's a message in it somewhere, I'm sure. But anyway, to answer your question, it took an emotional breakdown for me to reach in and grab out what was really me. So hopefully other people don't have to go to that kind of experience to do it. And to answer the question about making, I think you should put that back into number two or number three slot, because ultimately you've got to do this for a while and you've got to find your own voice, like whatever form of creativity it is. And uh, in terms of making money, you can't do it for that reason alone, unless you are very, very, I would say, non-creative. In other words, you're just seeing a business and you put some words to it, whatever it happens to be, whether it's a blog about Bitcoin or something, I don't know, something that is very now. If you can do that, then probably you'll make money. Various magazines, formats that you can do that with. But in terms of actually writing for you, well, again, there are publishing platforms and you've got to find, this is, this is the journey. You've got to find that, the algorithm that is going to work for your message for your books and then in time once you've got that right yeah money can be made but it's not a, you know i'm gonna make money by writing a book it, it takes time one thing i will say just on to end, end that point because i know we, we've got times uh, time scale here is that if you've put this into your mind if you go into a bookstore a real life one day when you know go back in our minds to what normal used to be and you could walk into a bookshop and you think that there are probably, I mean, I'm guessing five, 10,000 books in that bookstore alone, right? How many of those books are actually getting picked up? 50? Not many, not many. Because the books that have been, you know, positioned and merchandised are what people see and what they see in the newspapers, etc. all done by the publishing companies. But there are so many people, there are so many books out there, that even in a bookstore, even if you're published in a traditional way, you're not getting seen, you know? So it's all changing now. And these digital platforms are giving us the opportunity to be seen. So I'd say that was how I'd answer your question. I do know that there's a lot of people who are writing blogs for other people, who are just writing articles mm -hmm. for other people. And so there is an income stream to keep you going while you build, write that great novel, that story that's within you. And I do believe every person has a book inside them. Yeah, for sure. What are the resources that you've discovered that have helped you along your way as a digital entrepreneur? I, I guess it's meeting people like you. It's meeting people in a community that all are from different parts of the world that connect somehow. I mean, we all find our people somehow. We just do. And those are the people that get you through times like this right now. You know, when you're feeling a little bit low or you're feeling a bit blocked or you're feeling a bit lost or lonely or whatever it is in this strange strange time these are the these are the things i find the other sort of sense of resource in other words materials and data and stuff is coming at you so many different directions and now i think we're all finding that this is this overwhelm it's something i've never experienced in my life before i've already right now as we speak got four challenges going on and I just don't know what day of the week it is, really. It's exhausting. The question is, after all of that, are you a wiser, more efficient, better, whatever person for it? It's part of the ride, I guess. But there are so many resources. But for me to answer your question, I would say it's the people. It's the community that makes things happen a little bit like this, like we're doing now. I think a lot of people think that if I choose to be an online entrepreneur, I'm all by myself. And there's some truth to that. But the other part is if you find community, 
if you find people who will help you hold yourself accountable, if you will find people who are maybe two or three steps beyond where you are right now in your skill and abilities, and they can help you with whether it's the website or getting an article written or how to engage in something like affiliate marketing, if that's your thing, or to go into the e-commerce universe or even online publishing, how to publish yourself. They're all there. And so there's nobody who really needs to be alone. There's no such thing really as a solo entrepreneur. And there's no such thing that you have a website you can hide. If you want to be successful, you really need to become engaged with people, relate to people, be somebody that people can talk to, come back at. And it doesn't mean you have to have a personal one-to-one -one conversation like you and I are having right now, it could well be you're putting up a video answering questions or whatever for people. And they, they know that they're not talking to some kind of Russian bot. Gary, just a matter of time. <laughs> just, just a matter of time before the great AI takes over. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What is the most common myth that you'd like to debunk about this career path? Well, it's difficult to answer that because I suppose the, we've answered that already by talking about people thinking that they can just start an online business and, you know, have an easy turnaround or a quick turnaround. I think that's the myth because people are thinking, oh, the only way I would say this is it's got to come from in, from within somehow or a realization. I had this realization about it, oof, I would say over a year ago, and that's when my whole process, you know, my processing of this started. I was sitting in an apartment in China and I just thought, I can't keep doing this for indefinite periods of time. I want to be near my, my daughter. I can't do this for much longer. And that's when the moments, and that's when the message hit me, you know, with that saying, when the student is ready, the master will present itself. And that's when that kind of moment happened for me. And that's when I realized that there wasn't any option for me anymore. I had to learn how to do something for myself that would bring me an income, hopefully, and allow me to move. And I need to move as a personality. I need, as a person, I need to move, but I also need to be in different places because of my life, the way it's, it is right now. And then ironically, we're all locked down and we can't move, but that gives you another reason why it's the way ahead. So the answers are all being presented in front of us. It's just how we approach it in terms of myths. I suppose the only one that comes to my mind is this, you know, immediacy. It, it's just not, it's not doable. It's not sustainable, I don't think. I think one of the things that people kind of wonder about is, I don't have any technical skills. Mm -hmm. How do I do this? I think they would be stunned to discover how few of us actually have technical skills. We pick up a few things along the way. It's not like you need to know how to program a computer or do anything really classy. Most of the stuff is just follow the directions and cut and paste. That's true for you. I mean, you, you and I are pretty much out of the same pool yeah. where we didn't grow, you know, we got kids that can just zoom right through thinking that ah, there's nothing there. And that is and, uh, truth. I'm getting lessons, you know, yeah. from younger ones, yeah. you know, like yeah. for example, yeah. I was being yeah. taught how to share screen, which I can do. And I've been doing for numbers of years, but on the phone, I'm like, what you can do this. Of course you can. Yeah. Amazing. Cool. Mark Jeremy Clifton, if you could step into my shoes and you could say to yourself, I wish Gary Jenkins had asked me this question, what question would that be? Best answered in my, in asking why did you start this journey? I suppose that would be the question that I would have asked. Okay. So I'm asking that question. What or why is the cause or the reason for you to start this journey? Yeah. And I think the reason I would, I would answer that, and I think this is central to the whole, whole reason. I mean, in general for the whole thing, is based on the fact that I got separated and lost connection for a while with, with my daughter. And that was that the, as we all say in this kind of scheme of things, the aha moment, the moment that things started to become very clear. Because up to that point, not really. And I think that then the how and the why, you know, these all come afterwards. It's, it's, the, it's the reason. 
And this is the central thing for me. It, it can't be ignored that here I am living with my parents again. And it just reaffirms the things that happened to me in my life. And now we've gone full scale with another generation. And I just don't want that ever, ever to happen again. And I suppose that is the point. And so when that kind of dawned on me, I had a very, 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 very tight, close relationship with my daughter up until I think she was about seven. And then she came with me on the road for a year or so, and then she went back with, with, with her mum. And from that moment on, it became clear, this is what I have to do. And I had to connect with her, to reconnect with her back to on the path that we really should have been on all along. And that's what got me going, to be honest with you. That is the essence of all of this. And I found lots of creative ways for us to, to connect. Um, the books are just one of them. That's really quite beautiful. And I don't think you're alone in the world with that similar experience. There's a lot of people who can really relate and resonate with that. And speaking of people who are relating and resonating with you, great segue. How could they get in contact with you if they wanted to find out more? Well, what I'm just about to start is a, a program. It's called The Letter. And it's something I've been looking into for a while because I do realize having spoken to the community and people in large that there are lots of people that do or realize that they haven't really connected in the true sense of the word with themselves firstly obviously and then latterly with somebody whoever that person happens to be so I've created a program it's an online program called the letter and I'm going to help people connect through this I have put the Facebook link on here somehow to you and I will send it again but that is where and that's how people can find out a little bit more about it and see if they like the idea of connecting with the with their loved ones wonderful great and don't worry folks it's going to be in the show notes and you will know exactly where to connect with this really fine lovely gentleman who i enjoy his philosophy and profound thoughts in life so i am at that point now where i'm going to invite you to speak for two uninterrupted minutes and share with the world anything you want to say the time mm. is now yours okay thanks gary so uh, my philosophy uh, has been very clear for the last year or so in fact a lot longer than that but let's just stay in the sense of what we're talking about in that we are born with a very clear light and it's with us from the day we're born and we go through a path as like a kind of pathway that's presented. And that, in my opinion, is through nurture, through nurture and education. And basically, we are either encouraged, supported, nurtured to follow this kind of instinctive path or, or not. And most of us, I would go into the second category, we, ad we adapt to life. We survive. We, we just do our best. And it's become quite a passionate thing of mine, quite a strong essence inside of me that I want to share with others, because it's not until we get back on that pathway that we really connect with ourselves. And on that basis, we can, you know, give. We, our output is much more genuine, real. We become confident in ourselves. We have genuine love, sharing. Everything that comes out of this is going to be a lot more positive than if you're on the, on the wrong path. And so everything I've been working towards in all of my books, actually, in all of the, my communications have been around this philosophy. And just to sum up, the books that I've written are with my daughter, because I used to, to read her stories when she was when she was young and she used to love them. And you could see she became alive with all of the possibilities as children do when their imaginations are allowed to you know, roam free. And so it's part of my, if you like, uh, legacy to her and to her while she's still growing up that we have this connection that we can share stories and ideas together because that supports her creativity and I think that's without that you're lost so that's my my spiel for the moment <laughs> well thank you so much well, ladies and gentlemen Mark Jeremy Clifton poet 
author, philosopher, father, <laughs> and conservative hippie. <laughs> I quite like all of that. If you enjoyed the podcast, please consider subscribing and do share it with other people who you think might resonate with the message. That will conclude our episode today, and we will catch you on the next one. Thank you.